I'm called Christian Bruku, born here in Adidoma, 1938. And uh, I don't know, but everything that God do, you must appreciate it. Christian Bluku is now 85 years old and resides in Mafe, Adidome, a community in the Volta region's Central Town District. He spent most of his formative years here. After elementary school, Christian went to learn tailoring and later enlisted in the Workers' Brigade. That was, I left school 57. So we had the Ghana certificate, the first one. So after that, man, my father said I should stop the school and come and learn tailoring. So I stopped the school and came. I was born like a, the, a natural soldier. I was in advanced camp in a brigade. But by then, my father to stop, so he took the machine. Yeah, I took the machine to brigade. In 1960, when Ghana became a republic, Mr. Bluku's cousin, a medical doctor, had just returned from abroad. Bluku's family asked him to go and stay with his cousin in Accra for a supposed better life. His visit to Accra eventually brought him closer to the corridors of power. Bluku recounts how his cousin recommended him for a job and how his CPP card earned him a position at the Christian Borg Castle, which was the home of Ghana's first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, at the time. He gave me a note, I should go to state house and then asked of the director. He's called D.S. Kwakupo. But then he and one Mr. Fojo, he uh, retired, I don't know, uh, Fojo was also from police. He said, he's his mama. She has to go to D.S. in uh, Kokupo for interview. So because he mentioned interview, eh, then I took uh, my certificate. Uh, I uh, seven from four living, I was done seven living, so I took it, I, I had it 57. I took it and all. Plus my CPP party card. If I not uh, had the party card, to, uh, I would have failed the interview. The question, that question, then I put the party card from my pocket and I gave it to him. After a week or uh, two, getting to the second week, the daughter came laughing to the mother and we were in the afternoon. They say hey, I had a, a job for uh, uh, Christian. In his active days at the Christian Borg Castle, Mr. Bluku said he was always preoccupied with how to keep the first president safe. He told stories about security operations they conducted in the dead of the night. From that place, I was calling for after probation, then he sent me to castle. Then they confirmed me as a bodyguard uh, to, to Nkuma. Then they, they uh, put me in protection. Because Nkuma at the time he used to go out in the night. When he's going here, they, those, those people who are smart in the castle, they you see how you, then you have to follow them, uh, follow him, because bodyguard will not be in the house at night time. You, are you getting me? Yes. So we'll be doing that. At the time, I used to go to. <laughs> there are some, anyway, I, I, I have a, what they call it, a, a secrecy or what they, they, <laughs> they do. But now I'm free to speak. At the time, I used to go to. The uh, seaside, the brass has spread uh, to console this in the spiritual we pray, doing pray like how we can hear we pray. No, so mm. he also used to do that and go to the uh, seaside and pray there, this and that. There are certain things he also, also do. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's ideology was radical. He believed in a new Africa that is independent and free of imperialism. These ideals won him more love and support across the continent, but he later fell out of favor in his own country. We cannot, under any circumstances, allow imperialists and new colonialists to interlock with traitors in our midst to deflect us from the path of duty and progress. <laughs> Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah survived five assassination attempts. On January 2nd, 1964, 
Constable Ametepe fired close range rifle rounds at Nkrumah before being overpowered by his police colleagues. The president was unharmed, but a security guard was seriously injured and died soon after. The octogenarian recounts how events unfolded at the castle after the failed attempt on the life of the president. And he's the one who uh, uh, this is. I'm a tape brought down. He was he was a chief bodyguard. Charlie Fudaga, he was given a state barrier. That is why when they give us say if you die, they will give you a state barrier and uh, some uh, bonuses from your family. <laughs> but you have to volunteer. That week I was straight at the tower. By then I didn't hear know that anything at all happened. Eh? Yeah. Then he, called, uh, he asked me to stay. Then after seeing people uh, they say I should stay at the gate and seal the gate for him. Then because they said tell me uh, the, the instruction is seal the gate. I was get there. For me, I'm serious my work. I was doing that then they say I saw the camp coming. The car camp to I know that, who is he? Dr. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Goka, FDK Goka. What he, he was, uh, no, uh, Finance Minister, he still he has plenty push. Deputy Minister to help and all this thing. Not so. Yes. Then he came and stopped. Go well, wow, everybody was, they were quite that big man, I like why you are calling girl. Can you for your tower, this the Minister of Finance, all this time. Big Bim, Emuru, Igala, and all that, directing them to go. They are going there you, because he's from the domain. I know him. He didn't bring me to castle. Then he came and said, When I went uh, getting near to the car, he asked me, uh, Don't you know me? In the work, literally, you have to be serious. Know you for what? You brought me here. When my people are coming, Krobodusi and the others were directing their family to go to Russia and learn and this and that. You buy cutlass and put on that your office, eh, people for the Doma, you give them to go and farm. Damn, yeah, you didn't bleed me. You say, I, I should go. I, I don't think I know you. I know you for her. So he was serious. So he, he passed. Because I, he chatted me to a chatted. Me to allow you to go uh, to uh, who am I to go? Oh, they say seal the gate. Who am I you taking to, to go and cross uh, get, uh, enter and go and see Oma? But then I become, <laughs> become enemies. They went away. Following the incident, the president's own guard regiment was reorganized. Mr. Christian Bloku and several other bodyguards were transferred from the Christian Borg Castle to the Pediasi Lodge as a result. 1965, that's all. There, they had to do the to the security man, the top man. Less than a year later, in February 1966, Dr. Nkrumah was ousted while on a peace mission in Hanoi. Soon after, Mr. Bluku was also relieved of his job as a bodyguard. Years later, Christian's professional life took a nosedive. He returned to his hometown here in Adidome to do farming, to put food on the table for his family. After facing, when we came on, we all had to hear yeah, We have to come, uh, come back by then. Uh, uh, Africa and all this. Africa was there. This and that. See, we should come for one month free. We went there. That day, pay to if you had the old. I went and make some shopping too. I want, well, we see a big uh, land here. I want to come back and then do farming. I don't bother in that. The senior citizen is troubled about the level of partisanship in the country. According to him, indiscipline in public service is gradually sinking the nation. Uncle Mazda, there's a discipline. Now, Uncle, see what is happening. Uncle Mazda, what happened? You know, better man helping to come out of prison. Better man will help me. He play with Ghana money. He had to run away to work. Did uh, the uh, better man finish the work with Nkuma? Because he played with what? Ghana's money. What is happening now? We are done with Balonola, no, 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 no,
Fifia do bi yen pe amado kito di di pe to bu mi afa so ni de yin gba oyunyu de yin gba ogbogbe ala ka mi ala ko si gbo ko wa no si dan gana te e to be everybody take the tea to himself he take the tea to my brother saint john take it and say you say after he tell no kiss hey it is this will happen in kumasa Life has been difficult for the visually impaired old man. He stays here all alone, with his children visiting him only occasionally. He explains how he survives on a meager 47 Ghana CD monthly pension allowance, which is not even paid on time. Unfortunately, I don't know when I go to bank. They are reducing the tea, reducing the tea. Now, if I go, they say, we know bank costs, day to day, you have to take the cost, not so, mm. out of your pay. First what of 50. Then they are reducing it uh, now. They say 40. The 40 to sometimes if I go three months. I used to go every three months because I love coins. I, the last time I went, uh, last June, uh, 17 or so, luckily that day a uh, pay came. Uh, so uh, when they allow touch because when you come to me now, uh, if uh, uh, it's a, chil a child, I have to give back. Uh, so if they, they get the, uh, 120 or 120, I say the remaining, uh, they should give me the one million in single. Because if, if I give uh, 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 this thing, 10 CDs or 5 CDs to somebody, you will tell me it's one CD. Eventually, if you give them money, if you give them 50, uh, one CD coin, they will tell you it's 50% also. You see the coins here? So if I take the money, then they will, I will give, take coins too. Because somebody is helping me go, to go. I don't play with my gifts. So I have to give you something. I like giving out. Yeah. How for that is my policy. So if I will cry, I take my phone and cry. Uh, or if I went to bank. 40 cities a month. Mr. Bluku says he has on many occasions requested an upward adjustment of his pension allowance. In 2014, for example, the Ghana Government Pensioners Association wrote on his behalf to the Controller and Accountant General appealing for an upward adjustment of his allowance considering the high cost of living. But all efforts yielded no results. He also tried to find some support from the Disability Fund introduced to empower persons living with disability. But Mr. Bluku said he was frustrated, so he gave up. They say disability, this and that. I went uh, to the, this thing. They say I should be up because they, are, they should finish this for me. But then the place was not roof. They say you cannot, uh, do, they cannot do it. Then uh, what should I do to say? Uh, why well, they can help me they, to give me money, 3000 so that I give to the one taking care of me. After now, Ghana, they took my picture three times. The group uh, picture, to, I went there, I took it. But these people, they give me what? Uh, uh, rice with a chicken leg, with one drink, that's all. They will send the money on my phone after now. Despite his predicament, Mr. Bluku finds joy in contributing to radio discussions on social and political issues. That is why I don't play with radio. You, have, you see that I have three radio here. Eh? See the window? Yes. How many radio? There? Three. Eh, three. One for Vortasta, one for the Life, and then all this I do. Car. <laughs> you are yourself. I used to see to this and this. So life is difficult for me. I cook my uh, cake, cake seller will come and call me. I've come home. I went and buy my cake. That's what, because if, the, when he can, she can't this one, there's a small girl with me. I say to say, I have to come and collect some rice. I have for rice. So always if you come, I will joke and do that. You have a light coming near to me. Uh, so this one. Uh, so I, I wake up and cook myself and and chop and then lie down, hear my news. I know the radio. Yeah, if you, uh, after hearing the live from the local news, this and that, then I'll take to 
but that's that. Mm -hmm. At the time, the wind, uh, they say they cannot read the, the news, they cannot get across. They have to tend to drive. So this is our life. So it's difficult to me. Mm -hmm. Mr. Christian Bluku says he's grateful for the gift of life. He hopes to live long enough to celebrate his centennial. So I don't want anybody to suffer for me. And I keep suffering. If we luckily, I should uh, joke, joke that for me, I will count th three numbers. What is three numbers? Eh? Tell me. Three numbers, two numbers is what? 85 now. Mm. Three, uh, three is what? 100 also. Yes. And always when they ask, I say I will count that. But I don't, I don't feel bothered about this. I'm satisfied when I call my children, uh, my children that they call my grandchildren. They always, this, uh, one day, one, uh, recently I sent them my book. Then the grandpa, this they will fight you, I say, uh, when the father to the phone, they will be fighting the hours, I was happy about that. However, he is disappointed that the government has ignored him and has not considered increasing his pension allowance. Emmanuel Juvenis report for Joy Prime. Joy Prime, the ultimate experience.